Okay, well, I was, got onto Mr. Carlson's lab and I found this a little bit perplexing. Just go ahead and watch. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. During the last snowstorm here, I had a really bizarre occurrence happen. There was a lot of high voltage across my antenna. Now, when I say high voltage, I mean that there was enough voltage to arc inside of a radio. And there's something that makes it even just a little bit more bizarre. There was about 30 some odd ohms DC resistance to ground where it was arcing and it was still arcing with that shunt to ground. I'll explain a little bit more about that, which makes this high voltage occurrence just a little bit strange. At any rate, I'll explain that and I'll show you on the schematic what I mean here in just a little bit. Now, I was lucky enough to grab my other camera and run back into the lab and catch a little bit of the sparking when it was kind of at its peak. The snow is falling outside. I think there's some light on that. And that's what's happening inside the radio as the snow's falling past the wire, it's creating static. And the heavier the snow, the more static there is on my antenna wire. And this is what destroys some solid state radios. So this is the FADA radio on the bench. As you can see here, I have it down to 1 16th. So it's a little slow, but I wanted to get the brightness in there. That's arcing quite a ways. It slowed down a lot. It was going crazy earlier. I found this kind of odd that snow could, could create such a high voltage. Where is it getting the energy from? Why would snow have so much energy? It's kind of weird because when I came into work, I had a few LED light bulbs sitting on my desk that had burnout last night. I had already been looking into this and found this very interesting that the snow is creating a, a, a radio frequency that made such a high voltage. And if, if Mr. Carlson's confused about it, then we're all confused about it. Because this guy basically taught me a lot about electronics. He's a, he, he's a smart guy when it comes to electronics. So if he's confused about it, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it. But man, I had some burnout LED, LED bulbs they burned out in the snowstorm last night. Yeah, it's like that snow is getting some energy from that ether or something. So what the fuck is in the snow is what I have to ask. Is there metals in it? Where is this charge coming from? Is it pulling it from the ether? I mean, it's just snow. It's just snow and Maybe it had some sort of effect on everybody's electronics, who knows? I'm thinking there's some sort of fucking beryllium or some bullshit in the snow, dude. Everybody's been getting headaches. Everybody's been feeling like shit since it started snowing around here. Yeah, Mr. Carlson getting high voltage from snow through his antenna. It's pretty nuts. Anyway, food for thought. I just about forgot to show you the desk lamp. This is the desk lamp that got affected by what's going on. So again, the coaxial cable was laying over the line cord. The switch to the desk lamp was off. So this desk lamp was not on when all of this happened. And that isolation transformer where the radio was most likely finding, you know, a path to ground in was plugged in right beside this. So the line cords are running very close together and everything like that as well. So maybe somehow there was some arcing in there who knows what happened, but this is what happened to the lamp. So what I'll do is I got to darken the camera up here so I can turn this on because it's a very, very bright lamp. Turn the lamp on and it takes just a few moments for this to happen here. And you'll see that not just one string goes out, but you'll see multiple ones go out. Now, without the filter on on my camera, this is really flashing like crazy on this end here. It's it's uh, very, very fast. You're seeing what the frames of the camera is catching right now. One thing that's very odd about this, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, it's just the bulb itself gets extremely hot. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just shut this off. 
and it'll brighten things back up again. So this gets extremely hot. So just from that little occurrence there, this bulb is very, very, very hot. So very lucky I didn't have the uh, coax coming into this lab here because I might be down a whole bunch of uh, solid state test equipment. So that's what it did to the bulb. So I'll tell you about what I did to try and capture this if this happens something again. like that. So I'm quickly moving around. Now everything is powered down in lab number two. Nothing is hooked up. So I'm thinking, well, what could be cracking in here? This is really strange. Everything's switched off. So I get closer and closer to the bench, and this is the thing that's cracking. And what's happening is this right here, down in here, from this point of this coil, is arcing to the chassis, as you saw previously in the video. Now what makes this even more strange is that this is a capacitor, so this is designed to block DC. And this point here, which is arcing to the chassis, is shorted to the chassis through 30 ohms of DC resistance in this coil already. So technically this coil should just be dragging this off to ground. So any of you that are RF engineers out there are knowing what I'm saying right now. This is a very strange occurrence because there is 30 ohms, about 36 ohms through this coil.